All right, we're already two minutes late, so I better get started so I don't get everybody mad at me because I'm all about being prompt. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's a real pleasure. It's a real pleasure for me to be here this morning um, and, um, and offer uh, just a presentation um, as it relates to options that we have in senior living. Um, this is a very open forum, so as I walk through different slides today, if you have a question that pops up in your mind, you know, feel free to just reach out and let me know. I'm happy to stop and answer questions at any time. And then as we work through the presentation and get towards the end, I'll certainly also offer an opportunity for questions uh, when we get to that part of uh, the presentation. A little bit about who this gentleman is that's standing in front of you. Um, my name is Tim Hamilton. I am a regional marketing and sales director uh, with Life Care Services. Um, I've been working in senior living for a little bit over 15 years. Um, Life Care Services, the company that I work for, is based in uh, beautiful Des Moines, Iowa. And Life Care Services has been in senior living for a little over 50 years. We own and manage about 150 communities across the United States. We either own them or we manage them. Um, I have the ability to work in sales and marketing in California, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, and, um, and again, Wisconsin. I got Wisconsin on there twice, I don't know why. Um, I also work in Oregon, and um, when I got hired as the regional marketing and sales director, they said, you're going to be the Midwest regional marketing and sales director, Midwest. So I didn't realize that Virginia and uh, California were part of the Midwest, <laughs> but apparently it is. So um, again, I am, um, I am here in support. I work with uh, Luther Village, which is here obviously in Arlington Heights. Uh, Rick Remington is in the back. Rick is the executive director of the community. Uh, Lynn Miller is also here, and Lynn is the broker who handles our listings at the community. So we uh, oversee the brokerage at that community. So that is the partnership that I have with Luther Village as it remains from a local perspective. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, different options that we have. I figured instead of putting a picture of myself up there, people would rather see a dog. So uh, I decided to uh, take a picture of Mr. Handsome, which is my dog Brody back at home, and put him up on the screen. It's always, uh, it's always fun to have photos of pets uh, with us. So a couple of different topics that I wanted to talk about. We're gonna t I'm gonna explain a couple metrics for you that probably won't be a surprise to you, but I wanna offer you some insights as to what's going on in the world as far as senior living goes, what goes on as far as uh, availability for seniors and what the trends are looking at. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what do seniors want. So we've done a lot of research and I'll be curious to kind of talk to you a little bit about you know, what we have found that seniors are looking for versus what you might be looking for. So really kind of curious to hear what your thoughts might be as it relates to that question. Um, again, we'll talk about the different options that we have. So um, there's not just one size fits all anymore for senior living. There's a plethora of options that exist out there if you've decided to dip your toe and learn a little bit more about senior living. I'll talk a little bit about how to navigate your search. So when you've made that decision that you want to go out and learn a little bit more about senior living, how do you go about that? How do you make that happen? And what steps can I offer you from, from a recommendation standpoint? I say steps because you know my role as my role today as a regional sales and marketing director, I don't have the direct interaction that I used to have from a sales experience when people came in to meet with me at the community level. So I worked as a salesperson for a long time at a community outside of uh, Milwaukee, which is where I'm from. Uh, so I spent a lot of time in sales, meeting with a lot of individuals like yourself and talking through the process and so forth. So um, I'm gonna just share with you again, uh, my experience in interacting with individuals and kind of helping them navigate and offer recommendations as, they, as they've decided to to learn a little bit more about senior living. And then lastly, just talk about how to prepare for a visit to a community. So I'll just offer some insights from my experience. And um, you know, these are big decisions that you're all making when you make that decision finally to transition out of your home. Uh, I see it as sometimes the last major decision you're gonna make in your lives when you make that decision to make a move. So we take it very serious. So again, it's how can I help educate all of you and help you prepare for that when you've made that decision that you wanna go learn a little bit more about senior living. 
So let's talk a little about metrics that matter. I think we've all heard this, this uh, information as it relates to about this silver tsunami that's upon us. Um, really the point of the slide is really talking about the, 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 re, the incredible growth that we're going to see in this population um, throughout the country. I mean, you look at where we are today and the number of people that are 65 and older is only going to massively increase as we go over uh, the span of the next 20, 30, 40 years. We also have a significant population of people that are 75 plus, or 85 plus, excuse me, that are going to continue to age. And then you've got this middle from 75 to 84 that's also going to continue to grow. So as part of this largest population and demographic of individuals that are retiring, that are looking for options as far as uh, housing for, for, for your life after you've decided to move out of your home, um, we've got this huge wave of seniors that are going to be out there looking for and searching for senior living. So with that huge growth in people interested in senior living, what we're going to find is that the demand has certainly not, it's not going to keep up with the growth. So what you see is, um, you know, we've got, we've got supply on this lower line, and we've got all this projected growth of individuals that are going to be looking for senior living. So what that tells me is that we're just simply not building enough retirement communities, rental communities, um, anything you can think of from a care perspective, the construction is not happening anymore. A lot of it happened, there was a, there was a big onslaught of new builds across the country that was happening kind of prior to COVID. When COVID hit, uh, suddenly the banks decided they didn't want to loan a lot of money out for new construction and senior living. So that has caused um, really a major change in shift. So as we get to these later years between, between 2025 and above, we're going to see a huge swing where we're not going to have enough inventory for that big wave of seniors that are looking for senior housing. So what does that mean to all of you? What that means to all of you is if you're beginning to think about beginning to investigate, want to learn more about senior living and the options that exist out there, you're probably in the position where you'd want to start thinking sooner rather than later uh, to start looking because again, the amount of inventory that's out there is drastically going to shrink. And I can tell you, you know, from personal experience, I work, as I mentioned, from Virginia to California, so I'm all over the, I'm all over the United States. From an independent living standpoint, which is the direction that all of you would look to probably transition to, the occupancy percentage over the last two years has significantly climbed. We, we have very little inventory when it relates to independent living apartments or private homes and villas that these communities offer. So um, I don't see that changing. We don't see that changing um, over, the next, over the next 10, 15 years. So again, if you're interested in senior living, now's a good opportunity and time so we have done a lot of research, uh, my company, Life Care Services, to try to understand more about the seniors of today, which would be all of you, what you're looking for, and how we can make our offer more palatable to all of you and make sure that we're offering you what you're looking for when you've made these decisions to start looking into different communities. We know that freedom is a big word for this demographic. You know, freedom and independent living. We know that seniors in this demographic are looking for a freedom of choice. We know that they're looking for a freedom of time, a freedom of privacy, and a freedom of finances. So those four key, those four key buckets are things that as we look at and as, as we're teaching our teams to sell our communities and what we have to offer, we know that those are four key metrics that we have, to, we have to fulfill because individuals in this age demographic are looking for freedom, plain and simple. We know that clear as day. We also know that there's seniors that are looking for the community lifestyle, um, have various needs that we have to try to satisfy and balance. Um, we have introverts, people that, that don't want all the activities planned out for them. They want to be free to do what moves them in the moment. So they don't want to go by a schedule. They want to free, have the freedom to be independent. 
and spend their time the way they want to spend it. So we know that is what individuals are looking for. And then we have extroverts. They'd like lots of exercise and sports options. Uh, pickleball, gym classes, playing cards, craft options, special trips, lectures and musics, lectures and music, opportunities to socialize. So again, the studies that we show are that we've got this group of introverts and we've got this group of extroverts and we've got to make sure that all of our communities balance and mesh that for everybody that's raising their hand and showing an interest in our communities. W would you agree with that assessment? Introverts, extroverts, some want everything, some want to be completely left alone. We also know that there is a huge desire to socialize in small groups, but also in large groups. But again, we, we also have to balance that off with offering the freedom to be independent and to continue to function and operate a, as you see fit. Um, but studies have all shown, especially as we came out of COVID, you know, a lot of individuals like yourselves were, were homebound for a long period of time. And we know that because of that, and the studies that we've, we've looked at from a mental health perspective, that socialization is key to longevity and health, a healthy and long life. So we know that we've got to offer at our communities uh, socialization for individuals who want to engage and want to be able to socialize, get involved with others, and continue to live a very fruitful life. The culinary experience. So seniors now want it all. Is food important to you? Sure. I heard sure, I heard absolutely. Yeah. I mean, food's kind of, a, I'm kind of a big guy, so food's kind of important to me. Um, you know, when we, when we meet with individuals that are looking at senior living, you know, we talk about these beautiful communities and all that they have to offer. I can guarantee you one of the top things in everybody's mind is, tell me about the food. Food's important. And we recognize that, and I think we're trying to do a lot of redesigning of communities to make sure that we're able to offer that balance for individuals that are looking at different dining options. Some people come to communities and they have no interest in participating in the dining experiences at all. They want a fully functioning kitchen so that they can continue to cook as, as they see fit. But we also know that they want multiple dining options and venues within these communities. They want a variety of different menus, we know that. They want flexibility in the dining options that we offer, so they don't want, you have to have three meals a day. That's it, three meals a day. Or it's one meal a day. You know, we know that we have to offer options for individuals when they come to our communities. We know that we have to offer casual experiences. Um, I don't know about all of you, but I don't think you want to wear a suit every single time you come there for dinner. Maybe you do. I don't know. For me personally, I like, to, I like to be more casual. So we have to offer all that stuff. So if you think in your mind or you've not visited a retirement community in years, I encourage you to do that and take a look around and see what's changed and evolved. You know, it's not that stuffy building that it used to be. There's a lot of activity and there's a lot of things that are thriving in there. And we offer, again, a casual dining experience at a lot of the communities that are out there for you to take a look at. A new take on longevity. Everybody wants lifespan to match well span. Everybody wants wellness. We hear that time and time again. Tell me at the community what type of activities do you have to offer to keep me independent? Proactive versus reactive health approach. Again, that goes into the wellness aspect of, of community living. And boomers want to thrive, not just survive. Right? We don't, we're not here just to, just to make it to the next day. We want to continue to build our own wellness, and communities are offering that in a variety of different ways, whether it's fitness programs that are available, whether it's aquatics, whether it's memory, memory classes, balance classes. There's a lot of opportunities for seniors that move to community life to be able to participate in a lot of the wellness activities that go on on a daily basis. That all being said, we all know and recognize and we've seen others in our lives where they need higher levels of care. We all want to live independently as long as we possibly can. And I have heard that message loud and clear 
in many meetings of a lot of families throughout the time I've worked in senior living. That being said, they want higher levels of care available but not seen. I would hope to be around other people in good health who are active. We know that's what this demographic wants. I would want to be separate from assisted living or memory care, but would want it conveniently located on the property. So they're okay with having it in the community, they just don't want to be involved with and being interacting with people that are, from, that are dealing with, with higher functioning needs. I would not want to be someplace where most of the residents are ill. I've been to places where everyone just sits around all day. Quality of life is critical. Understand that completely. I need to see people younger than me walking around. So again, what we're seeing is that the need for care, the need, to be, uh, the, the need and the ability to get connected to care when needed is critical for this age demographic. Again, we do a lot of research and we do a lot of studies with the residents that, that live in the communities that we operate and support, which is like 30,000 of them. So we've done a lot of research to understand exactly what this demographic of individuals are looking for. Okay, let's talk about the different options that we have out there. So um, options that you all collectively have, choices that you all have. Option number one, we're gonna take a look at the different senior living options. Option number two, we're talking about, you can stay in your own home, absolutely. Option number three, which is my favorite, you can move in with your children or other family members. Doesn't that sound exciting? No. <laughs> no, no. Um, but it's clearly uh, a choice that individuals can make if they, if they decide to do that. Um, so we're gonna just kind of dive into and explore uh, these three options. So as it relates to different options in senior living, we start with active adult 55 plus co-ops, and I'll go into more detail on what that means, but we're looking at senior apartments. We look at rental retirement communities with independent plus services, and then we go to assisted living, which also would include memory care, skilled nursing, and then we have what we call a continuum of care retirement community, also known as a CCRC. So you can kind of see as it relates to care and health Active adult 55 plus apartments, rental, there's really no help needed. You're living independently. When you transition to assisted living slash memory care, we're looking at some help that's needed. And then when you're looking at 24 hour skilled, 24 hour care, you're looking at more skilled nursing, nursing home type environment. So that's the plateau and the, and the uh, different levels of care that we're gonna be talking about. So let's talk about the rental offer first. Option one, you can rent. There's a lot of rental communities in this area. Um, we, work with a, we work with a large portfolio of them. The rental offer, you, have, you pay a monthly fee. That includes some standard services and amenities. Some rental communities include access to a restaurant, a fitness center, and events. Typically in rental communities, there's no entrance fee. You usually pay what we call a community fee, so that's usually a one-time fee you pay, and then you pay a monthly fee for amenities and services that you receive. As your health changes, you may become ineligible to live there. So some rental communities do not allow you to bring in care if you need it. Now mind you, if you do bring in care and if you need it, that's an expense that will come out of your pocket. Again, no health care included. Family must hire and coordinate care. And they do not offer all levels of care. Again, you will need to move if something changes with your health. Okay? So that's the rental offer. Let's talk about the 55 plus co-op model. So again, I mentioned that um, I'm in partnership with Luther Village. Luther Village here in Arlington Heights fits the 55 plus co-op model. It is really a purchase. Well, we'll call it for all intents and purposes a purchase. More like a real estate transaction. You pay a monthly fee for some of the amenities and services that are available. You have uh, access to restaurants, fitness centers, and events. 
You have no health care included. The family must hire a coordinator of care. Some communities offer those services. You just have to coordinate with the wellness team on site. And again, they don't offer all levels of care. Can you age in place? Can you bring in care to stay independent? You certainly can do that. That's, that cost is then passed on to you. But again, if you needed to transition to a higher level of care, the co-op 55 plus model is typically just independent living, okay? And then we have what we call the CCRC life plan. So CCRC, again, is a continuum of care retirement community. There are a number of different CCRC communities around. What they offer is a lifetime access to all levels of care within the community. So that community will have independent living, assisted living memory care, skilled nursing, and probably short-term rehabilitation all on one campus. So it's all inclusive. In a CCRC, you would pay an entrance fee to move in and then a monthly fee to live here. There's a full array of, ser of services and an amenities. They've got dining options. Most have a healthcare navigator that's there within the independent living community to help you age in place. Strong social opportunities, fitness and wellness programs. They really offer you a worry-free lifestyle. Your home maintenance goes away. I would say that uh, of all the models, if you're looking for something that's really all-inclusive and a one-stop shop that offers the ability to transition to all these levels of care, this is the direction that you would probably want to go. I will tell you from my experience, when you look at it and say entrance fee communities, you are paying a significant amount of money as an entrance fee to move into these communities. Um, some start as low as a couple hundred thousand dollars. It can go up to over a million dollars. It really just depends on the type of CCRC that you're looking at. If I'm offering any coaching to any of you as you investigate and look at these types of communities, when they talk about they're an entrance fee community, the question you want to ask is, tell me how your refund works on the money that I pay you. And what do I mean by that? These entrance fees, they can be 90% refundable. They can be 50% refundable. They can be zero refundable. So you want to understand, if you're looking at a CCRC, you want to understand how that refund model works. It's critical. And also you want to understand how you get your money back when you either move out or if you've passed away. The other point of a CCRC that I would have you make sure that you investigate is understand when you transition to a higher level of care, what does that coverage look like? How much is covered in of your monthly fee in assisted living, in memory care, in skilled care? It varies greatly. So those are questions that you want to be prepared for. Uh, then we talk about remaining in your own home. Why do they want dinner every single night? Your home maintenance continues. Landscaping, snow removal, that doesn't change. How do you get reliable medical help when you need it in home? We talk a little bit about the lack of socialization opportunities. You've got a great senior center here where you collectively can engage with others, which is awesome. And who's really overseeing and managing your wellness plan, right? I also talk in terms of Think about home maintenance for a second, you know. Think about the fact that if your roof needs to be replaced, if your furnace goes out, like you're responsible for all of that, right? You're responsible for finding individuals that will do all that work for you. Do you want to continue to carry that burden or would you like to hand it off to somebody else? And then there's the lawn, right? I still like cutting the grass for at least another week or two, but um, others, you know, there's a lot to be said for lawn maintenance and taking care of all that. Can you pay for all those services and have people come in? You certainly can do that, but do you want to or do you want to use that money moving into a community where you can use your dollars to do more for your life, for your lifestyle, to do the fun things that you want to do? That's what you have to think about. You know, I think a home is filled with memories, 
But when you make the decision to move, think about it in terms of you're now turning the page and you have the ability to create all new memories. You really do. But again, remaining your home is clearly an option that you have. I had a slide that talked about staying home and living with your own kids, but I don't think you want me to go over that slide because I think that's very complicated. And I don't think, uh, I don't think that's an option that you want. You certainly can do it. Obviously, the family dynamics can come into play. Some people find that is a really great option. Others just say that that is not something that I want to pursue. So let's talk a little bit about navigating your search. So you've decided to, what I call, dip your toe in the water. You've just dipped your toe and you want to learn a little bit more about senior living. What do you want to think about? You want to think about the location. You know, is it convenient? Is it in the neighborhood where I'm most familiar with? Look at the beautiful landscaping on the community as you drive in. What's your first impression? How does it make you feel? Think about that. As you walk around the community and you meet staff, do you establish them as quality individuals? You want to look at all the amenities and services, everything that the community has to offer. Dining venues, wellness, aquatics, lounges, all those things. The age of the building, like how is it kept up? Are shingles falling off the roof? Is the grass cut? It's simple things like that, right, that are important. Those are the details you look at. Age of the residence. You know, if you really look at it from a senior living perspective, you know, we always want our communities to get younger and younger. You know, that's always our goal. Let's get those people that are in their 60s to move to our communities, whether it's rental. It rarely happens. It really, rarely happens. You know, I will say, though, we're seeing a larger influx of people in their 70s that have made a decision to move, and we are seeing that average age of individuals moving into our communities dropping because people are just like, I'm tired of navigating the home situation. The real estate market is strong. I can get my house sold right away and, and cash out and make that decision to move. Again, as you look at the building, do they have apartments that fit your need or villas or um, cottages? The reputation of the community is important, right? So when you're doing your homework, are you looking at the reputation? Has anybody in the room gone on a trip or made a big purchase recently? No. Nope. You have. If you don't mind me asking a couple questions, if I get too private, tell me to be quiet, okay? What'd you do, um, so you, you, what'd you do for your research? Did you do any research for what you did? Went online. You went online. Okay, so you went and found their website, probably. A di what else? Anything else that you did? Anything specific you looked at? Looked at recommendations. Recommendations. So we'll call them recommendations slash reviews. Right? Reviews. Some reviews are uh, just really angry people. But, you know, reviews tell a little bit of the story about what's going on in a community. So if I was coaching you, which I am trying to do today, I would say if you're doing your research, make sure you look at reviews and see what other people are saying about their experience at that community. I, I, again, it kind of goes back to, in my mind, I'm thinking if it's myself or it's my parents and we are about ready to embark on a very major move moving out of their house. I'm gonna do as much research as I can. I'm gonna look at reviews. I'm gonna do absolutely everything I can to make sure that I know what I'm in for. So again, coaching to all of you is look at their online presence and learn about that community. Lastly, when you walk through, make sure the community is, what's the decor look like? Is the furniture updated? Is it falling apart? What's the odor? What's the ambiance? Think about those things, it's important. Don't just skip and just say, I really want to know how much it's going to cost. Tell me what the monthly fees are. Tell me how much it's going to cost me to move in. Those are important, don't get me wrong. But it's also important that you're really being mindful of what you're visually seeing as you're walking through the community. So how can you prepare for your visit? I should have copied this page for you and just, and I will probably send this over to the 
uh, to the receptionist so that they've got this to make copies. But how can you prepare for a visit? You've now made a decision, you've called, you've had that conversation on the phone with the sales team at the community, now you're like, oh my gosh, I've made a decision, I'm gonna go look at the community. What am I gonna do before I get there? I advise you not to just decide to then just get in your car, drive over, and start listening to them. Bad idea, bad idea. My coaching is, again, go to the community website, look at the photos, look at the gallery, do they have videos that you can look at? So you can get some sense of what the resident life is like. I think that's really important. We talked about the reviews. When you finally do get a chance to talk to somebody and they say, well, it's gonna cost you $5,000 a month to live here. It's a lot of money. So make sure that you know exactly what's included in those monthly fees. And then ask the questions about what are the qualifications to live here? Some communities will ask you some financial information because some of them will charge a very large entrance fee to move in and they're going to ask you those questions. I say know your financial situation because it's not like we're trying to be nosy, but we're also trying to coach you. And if it's not going to be a good fit for an individual, do you want to waste your time looking at something that really financially will not work for you? So my advice to you is simple. When people ask you and you come and decide to make the decision to meet with somebody, be prepared. Hey, I know my house is worth about X. I know I have about X amount of dollars in assets. Keep it very simple. They don't need to know that you have stock in Boeing and in Apple and in McDonald's. So keep it really simple. But they're going to ask you, so be prepared. It's not, again, like they're trying to get into your business, but again, if it's not a good fit, they don't want to waste your time. Your time is valuable, okay? What is most important to you? What is most important to you? So think about that and think, you know, if I made a decision to move, what do I want to make sure that this community has to offer? I am really into astrology. That just came to my mind. I'm really into astrology. Do they have classes? Do they have groups that get together that are focused on that? I really am into playing bridge. It's something that's really important to me. I would always ask people that came to my community, tell me like the three most important things for you, the three things that are most important. So I, 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 I put that out to all of you to do the same thing. Think about what's most important and be willing to share what's most important to you so you can see if it's going to be a good fit, okay? Will your family be involved in your future plans? Some seniors say, absolutely not. I am going to make my own decisions. This is all about me and my husband. We're gonna do everything on our own. That's totally fine. I would also suggest though that if you have children that are worried about you and involved, you know, bring them to look at and experience the community. Again, another fresh set of eyes can help you in that decision-making process. Maybe they'll come for an event. Maybe you'll get invited to come back for a meal, something like that. You know, you should not make a decision based on one visit to one community. You need to look at others to see what the difference is out there, what one has, what one doesn't. And really, again, just obtaining as much information as you possibly can before you go. So as educated as you can be before you walk in that door is wonderful because you want to be able to uh, absorb, ask great questions. If you just come into a community for a visit and you just sit there and you just want to know how much it costs, you're going to get nothing out of it. You're, you're not going to have any answers. You're going to leave there and say, okay, I know it costs this, mu this much money. I can make that work. Well, what the heck, I'll do it. And then you move in and you realize they don't care about you at all. I have a couple parting thoughts and um, I do this just as a recommendation for all of you. Like, Think about a couple of these phrases as you begin looking into senior living. Be able to answer and think about this question. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. 
I can tell you I've heard that sentence a thousand times. I'm not ready. Okay, you're not ready. Tell me what that means. Tell me what that means to you. So when you say to me, I'm not ready, when you go look at a comedian and you say, I'm not ready, what does it mean? Like what's, what's really holding you back? So I just want, I encourage you to think about that when you make the decision to learn a little bit more about senior living. Think about what would make you ready. Is there something holding you back? Because you have to realize there are a lot of resources that are available out there if you decide that you want to make the move. There are resources for, for downsizing. There's real estate people that are, there's handymen that are out there. There's so many different resources out there to help remove the barriers that people feel. I've moved people in that have been in their homes for 60 plus years and they're like, I got so much stuff to take care of, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, there's services and things that are, are out there to help individuals do that. You don't know what kind of, you don't know who to list your home with from a realtor, you don't have a handyman. Just be mindful of the fact that there are resources out there and every community should offer you those types of services. If they don't, they're not doing you any justice and they don't care about you. So again, remember, I'm not ready. Think about it in terms of what ready looks like for you. For some people, they may never be ready. And you know what? That is okay. Because a lot of people would prefer to just stay in their own home, age in their own home. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, answer the question, I'm not ready. The other favorite line I hear, you know, Tim, I really love this apartment. It's beautiful. You know, it fits my needs. I love the bedrooms. I love the layout. I love the great countertops, the appliances. You have a pool. You've got great dining. You know, it's all great. The residents are wonderful. The staff is great. But you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until something happens to me. Okay, show of hands. Uh -huh. Who in the room is going to wait until something happens before they move? <laughs> right? I can, just, I can just tell you from personal experience, and I'm actually working, I'm coaching really hard right now. I've got um, my in-laws, I'm really trying to help them navigate this, and my father-in-law is really dug in and says he wants to wait until something happens to me. To me, that's a really, really tough strategy to live by. Think about, think about that statement and think about what that means. What that means is you're willing to put the burden on others is really what it comes down to. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. But you're really trying to put the burden on someone else because uh, you're gonna wait till something happens. We get so many people that are in crisis mode that are like, I've fallen, I've broken my hip. Uh, I fell in the parking lot. Um, you name it, it's ha it happens. And when that happens, they're in panic mode, then they can't do all of the steps we talked about. They're rushing to figure this out. They're rushing to find an option because they've gotta make a move and they gotta make a move quickly. All I'm saying is that if that's you, that's okay. But I'm saying think about it, not only for yourself, for yourself, maybe for your spouse, for your families. Think about that and think about what your plan might be. And at least, even if you're not ready to, to act on that plan, at least do some investigating so that you can learn about what options exist out there. Because you don't want to go function and operate in panic mode when something happens. Again, failing to plan is simply planning to fail. And you don't want to fail. We see it way too often where people fail. Those are my, those are my uh, lessons and words to live by on a pretty consistent basis. So I have very quickly navigated you through a lot of senior living options that exist out there. Again, from my perspective, it's pretty simple. It's you've got the ability to stay in your own home. You can look at rental communities and look at what their options are. You've got 55 plus cooperatives where it's more of a real estate transaction where you own something outright, which is an option. We talk about CCRCs, Continuum of Care Communities, that offer all levels of care. There's the option of moving in with your kids. 
So again, um, I think for, for my coaching to people when I have an opportunity to talk with them, all I suggest is that you just continue to investigate. You know, you, you made a decision to come and listen to some guy from Wisconsin talk about senior living today. So you've at least put your, like I said, you've dipped your toe in the water and you've gotten yourself a little bit educated. Now, from a next steps perspective, it's simple. You know, do your research. If you want to go out and look at communities, there are staff at every single one of those communities that has a sales team that's there that are anxious to meet with you and convince you that their place is the place for you to move into. Um, but again, be open. Don't go in there like this, sitting there, scowling that you're upset that you're there and you're wasting time, right? Be open, be open minded about it and be open to listening to what their offer is. Um, and again, from a financial perspective, they're going to ask you financial questions, offer them the very bare basics of it. They don't need to know your whole story, but be prepared. And again, be prepared to ask questions. And most importantly, remember what's most important to you, the three things that are most important to you. I have no more slides on my presentation. Are there any? Any questions, comments, anything? Yes, go ahead. Um, I just heard about the rentals uh, recently. Okay. I heard of somebody that moved in. Um, do they have uh, like one year leases or longer? Or how, does, how does that work as compared to just any rental? Yeah, tip, uh, the question is about rentals. You know, what's, what's the expectation on a lease? Uh, from my experience, when you're making a decision to move an old rental, they're usually going to ask you to sign up for at least a minimum of a year. That's pretty, that's pretty consistent from my understanding. Um, and usually, again, you'll probably have to pay a community fee up front. Sometimes that's your one times your first month's rent, um, and then start paying the monthly fee thereafter. But it's typically a year, and then they renew at the end of the calendar year usually uh, from that perspective. That also means that when those annual, re annual uh, renewals come up, more than likely you'll probably see is some increase in the monthly fee that you pay to live there. So just be prepared, be prepared for that. Yeah. Yes? Do most of them have the community fee and your monthly fee depending on your needs? Do or wants? Um, like the community fee, for example. Same whether it's a condo or it's No. So that differs in the same I'm oh, sorry. Fee. Yeah, sorry. The community. The question is really: Is the community fee and monthly fee does it vary quite a bit? It really does. Um, it really is depending on the community because again, some may charge you seventy-five hundred dollar community fee that's non-refundable, right? Some may charge two thousand. Some may charge the, the. It varies. I wish I could tell you that it's consistent, but it's kind of the wild, wild west out there. Same thing for like monthly fees. I mean, you really want to look at the monthly fee that you pay should be somewhat based on square footage, right? So if you're moving into a one bedroom apartment that's 600 square feet, you should see this number. And then as your apartment sizes go up, two bedrooms and up, you're going to expect to pay more money on a monthly fee from that perspective. So when you're talking about independent living, wherever, it's, pretty, it's going to be pretty consistent that uh, you're going to pay a monthly fee for the services that, that are offered at the community. You just want to understand when they say your monthly fee is $3,000 a month, what you want to really understand is tell me what's all included in that number. Because some will have meals included, some will not. Some will have cable, some will not. Some will have housekeeping. Again, you just have to, you have to get all that information from them when you're, when you're, when you're investigating. Good question. Any other questions, comments, anything? Yes? Uh, I thought this was Luther Village. I thought there was going to be more this, uh, like, talk about Luther Village itself. Oh, I want to talk about Luther Village, but I can't. I'm going to get in trouble because, um, no, in all seriousness, um, we were invited to the community center to talk more about all different options. We represent Luther Village. We're certainly happy to connect you with our team to have you meet with Luther Village to talk about um, what that community has to offer. Um, but we were more or less painting a broader spectrum of, of all the different options that exist out there. But we're happy to connect you. We can talk, we can talk afterwards. Yeah. 
Yes. Any other facilities that your company represents in the area, for example? Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, from a uh, from. From, from this specific area, I can think of a couple like uh, Sedgebrook, which is over in Lincolnshire, which is a full continuum of care, offers all levels of care. The Roosevelt at Salt Creek has been, they're repurposing it, and it's now a rental community. That's one of them that are part of LCS. Uh, we've got like Windermere in Wheaton, Illinois is one of our communities. We've got a pretty good footprint. Um, from a life care services perspective. As far as Luther Village goes, Luther Village is a standalone. They don't have another sister community somewhere in the, uh, in the area. That is a standalone community. Yeah, great question. Yeah, we got a lot, there's, a, again, there's, as I've kind of described, there's a lot of different options out there, uh, a lot of different companies out there. Um, so there, there's just, there's options. Yeah. What's the advantage of going with your company versus? <laughs> We're the best. <laughs> We're the best. Yeah, that's a great question. What, that's a really great question now I think about it because a lot of people don't know who owns these communities, right? Like could be a big, could be Goldman Sachs, could be these big banks, right? So that's what you want to find out and that's what you want to learn when you're doing your, when you're doing your um, investigation. From, from our company's perspective, from Life Care Services, we've been in senior living over 50 years. So we look at our reputation, we look at the fact that we've won JD Power Awards over the last five years for resident satisfaction. So we hang our hats uh, on that particular, um, from an awards standpoint and, our, and our, our length of time and tenure within senior living. Now, you look at something like Luther Village, for example, you've got a board of directors that oversee the community. Those board of directors are all residents. So if you're looking for a community where you've got resident involvement and in, in oversight of the community, that's what you'd also be looking for. Find out if they're profits, non-for-profits, who owns them, because there's a lot of owners and operators out there, but you want to look at, there's some that have consistently been rated a lot higher. I'm very fortunate that Life Care Service is one that's rated very high. But again, part of your research when you're looking, ask those questions. Who owns you? Tell me a little bit more about your track record financially. Yes? Okay, so with Luther Village, because I'm from Arlington Heights, I've seen it forever. Yeah. It, it's, it's not a rental, so is it a condo? What is it, Luther Village? I don't understand. Okay. You drive through it, you see. You drove through it? Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so, so what is it exactly? So Luther Village is a co-op. It's a cooperative. So you're purchasing, for all intents and purposes, whether it's the cottages that you see on the perimeters. Cottages is the right word, please. Villas, courtyards. Villa, villas, courtyards are the homes that are on the perimeter. And then you have buildings, mid-rise as we call them, and those are apartments that are within those buildings. So you've got apartments setting there, and then you've got the cottages and courtyards that are surrounding it. And it's again, it's a real estate cooperative, so you're purchasing that piece. You're, for all, you're pur purchasing shares, but for all intents and purposes, it's very much like a real estate transaction. You own it. And then when you move out, or if you've passed away, it's being resold, and you're, you're getting the money back that you've paid, plus hopefully appreciation and you pay a monthly fee for some of the services to live at the community. That's how that is structured. Um, is Luther Village not profit, or are some of these communities, because you, know, you, you hear about these, what are these? Uh, There's know, a lot of for-profits. So they are a non-for-profit. So Luther Village is non-profit. Yes, did I screw that up? I did not. They're non-for-profit, so basically, Money is being reinvested back in the community. It's not going to an outside big business. That's the benefit of something. That's the benefit Luther Village has to offer its residents. Money is being reinvested back into that community. So again, when you're looking at options that exist out there, is money going to some big bank out on the East Coast, or is it being reinvested back into the community? Non-for-profits typically run a better organization and offer and again, are putting more money towards their communities for the residents because it's not going in else and not going into somebody's pocket. Question. 
Yes. So when you buy a unit, a villa, or a condo, it's just like buying a house. And then when you leave, you sell it for whatever you can get for it. That is correct. So the only money that's going out is the monthly fees that you're paying. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. So it's like owning a house and all the fees. Except yes. You don't have to do the work, and you have access to all the amenities, all the services uh, that the community has to offer. So if you've not been in there, all of the wellness opportunities, dining opportunities, socialization, you name it, everything that community has to offer, you have access to as a resident of the campus. So if you buy a villa or a condo, yes. and you get to a point where you need help, medical help, yep. how do you transition to that? Do you just... Two things. One, if you decided you wanted to downsize, you could then decide you want to sell your home and move into an apartment in the, in the main building. You could do that. More, more likely, you would probably work with the wellness team at the community and build in some services that you'd pay for to keep you still remaining in that independent setting until you would have to transition to a higher level of care. In that same setting? though, I mean, in Luther Village, do they have? Just independent living. Oh, just independent. Just independent living. They have partnerships with a couple communities that offer higher levels of care that we can direct residents to. But for all intents and purposes, Luther Village is independent living. Yes? So the assisted living is separate from those apartments when you drive through. So if, that's a separate category where you're going for care. Yeah, if you're referring to Luther Village specifically, you've got Luther Village, the independent living campus. Right next door to it is Lutheran Home. They are not part of the same organization. Lutheran Home that's right there has assisted living, memory care, skilled nursing, and short-term rehab. We have a partnership with them, but they're not affiliated with the Lutheran, with Luther Village. But they offer assisted living? They do. Lutheran Home does, yes. Lutheran Home. Yes. Assisted living, memory care, all skilled them. nursing, all the higher levels of care are right there at that community as well. And are those apartments that you rent out now? Rooms. They're not apartments, they're usually, well, I shouldn't say that. They're probably one bedroom apartments for assisted living and then the sizes shrink as you get the higher levels of care. Any other questions? No other questions. Uh, I'll be here for a couple minutes afterwards. Uh, I thank you all for your, for your very valuable time. Really appreciate the opportunity. Um, as mentioned, I'm, I, I do represent and work with Luther Village here locally. Uh, we've got a team that's always available. You've got some handouts just to give you a little bit of information about our community itself. If you're interested in meeting with the team there, feel free to give us a call. We're happy to show uh, you our community and all that we have to offer.